At the height of his career, Michael Jordan was so well known and marketable as an athlete he could reportedly earn more money shilling shit with his name on it than he did leaping dozens of feet through the air to dunk on men the size of ladders. Of the many products to bear his name and likeness, the most famous are arguably Air Jordans, a shoe the NBA inadvertently made people think had magical powers. At least when Michael Jordan wore them. So finally, Lucas, I'm sat here in the Fact Fiend office in an undisclosed location with my copy of Space Jam on VHS by my side. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on Michael Jordan and just like, you know, Air Jordans? Do you, do you own a pair? Do you ever own a pair? Any, any fondness for the brand? Um, no, I've never owned a pair of Jordans myself. I, I okay. generally don't wear, uh, like, sneakers. But, mm -hmm. you know, I do think they are nice looking and... I do hear a lot of people say how cool they are. I adore the look of Air Jordans. The original Air Jordan 1 looks so fucking clean. Uh, well, they cost an absolute fortune, and even like you know the modern retro throwback versions of them still cost a bomb because they're made by Nike, and like you know, just scalpers get their hands on them immediately. And it's a shame that the sneaker market is basically just owned by scalpers because there are so many cool shoes that I'd like to own, but we'll never have a chance to because of that. Like, did you ever see the? Uh, the Adidas crossover promotion they had with, like, Dragon Ball. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they had, like, the uh, the Goku shoes that were, like, orange and blue, and then the Freezer ones, which were, like, purple and white. It's like, oh, these look great. How much are they? Oh, 100 quid. That's that's pretty expensive, but, you know, it's a limited... Oh, they're sold out. Yeah, there's some crazy, like, sneakerhead underworld that I only vaguely know about, and I'm just like, oh, yep. God, it sounds so difficult to get your hand on limited edition sneakers. Yeah, there'll no doubt be people in the comments right now talking about like how ridiculously difficult it is to get your hands on a decent pair of sneakers these days. And the story that encapsulates this from the height of the pandemic where there was a, an article about a guy who was selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sneakers and it was supposed to be a profile on this like, you know, this young savvy businessman. And it turns out that during the course of the interview they had with him, he just reveals for some inexplicable reason, oh yeah, my mum works for Nike. Oh. She's she's like a distribution manager for Nike, and I buy all of the sneakers on her company credit card directly from the factory. It's like, wait, so you're telling us that you are buying sneakers from the factory with a staff discount and then selling them for a massive markup? And the guy's like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? And it's like, are you a fucking moron? And he just oh admits God, to it. Like she must have been fired so fast. Um, she could not be reached for comment um, when I read the article. And Nike could not move on. That's the thing as well. I don't know if it's Nike or Nike. I think it's Nike in America and we'd say Nike over here. So I apologise if anyone was thrown off by that. But yeah, um, uh, that was a great story. And there'll be a link to it below if anyone was interested in reading like the, for all the details. But let's move back to Air Jordan 1s, which uh, were very famously worn by Michael Jordan um, during his NBA debut, or so the story goes. Because I know there's going to be someone in the comments below correcting this as well. So I'd like to clarify now that the story I'm about to tell is just the story that's been told over the years. And we'll get to the clarifications and corrections afterwards. So, Lucas, have you heard the story that Michael Jordan was fined for every NBA appearance he had in his initial debut for the shoes that he was wearing? No. Well, that's great, because I can tell the story now as it's reported by, by other lesser fact websites that don't do their research like I do. And the story is that during his NBA debut, Michael Jordan wore a pair of black and red Air Jordan 1s, which he was fined $5,000 and by the NBA for wearing because they clash with the uniform of his team. And this story has been touted endlessly online, has even been corroborated and confirmed by Michael Jordan himself in interviews. So like you said you were gonna clarify like that something's a bit different. What part of the story that isn't isn't true? Uh, the story is mostly true when Michael Jordan was fined about $5,000 for wearing a pair of shoes that clashed with his team's uniform um, due to them breaking um, a rule colloquially known as the 51% rule, um, which has since been rescinded, but uh, basically stated that um, the shoes worn by any player um, in the NBA had to be at least 51% white. So basically shoes had to be mostly white with accents that match your team's uniforms, which Michael Jordan's shoes did not do. As a result, he was fined. And the version of a story told online is that Michael Jordan wore Air Jordans during his debut and that Nike, sensing an opportunity for like, you know, some good branding and just free PR essentially, and paid the fine for him and just told him to keep wearing them during games. And that move coupled with Michael Jordan's subsequent telling of the story to the press has gone down in the annals of business history as a shrewd display of business acumen by both Nike and Jordan himself. And the thing is, that version of the story is not as interesting as what happened in real life. Cool, so like, what's the actual thing that happened then? 
Well, as I said, like he was wearing shoes that were black and red and clashed with the uniform rules and he was fine wearing them, but they weren't Air Jordan because during Michael Jordan's NBA debut, Air Jordans weren't released yet. And there are people out there, like you mentioned them earlier, like sneakerheads, like they have spent years chronicling the history of this brand and they've concluded that Michael Jordan never wore the shoe bearing his name during an NBA game ever. He only ever wore them during dunk contests, which probably has people wondering, so what was he wearing on his feet during his NBA debut? That got him fined? And the answer is he was wearing a prototype version of the shoe that did not exist and has never been released. Okay, so he wasn't actually wearing Jordans. He was wearing like a customized prototype instead. Specifically, he was wearing a pair of Nike Airships, which are a shoe you can buy that had been customized to look like Air Jordans because Air Jordans weren't available for sale yet, which I think makes the real story way more interesting than the fake version that's been like floated around online. Like, it's not that Michael Jordan was wearing um, a pair of his own branded shoes and got fined for it. He was wearing a customized super secret prototype version that was cobbled together from multiple different kinds of shoe that no <laughs> one anywhere has ever been able to buy. The important thing to note here is that nobody knew this, including the NBA. Because as mentioned, they just gave a shit about the color. They didn't care what kind of shoes they were. They were just bothered about the color. And Nike and Michael Jordan realized this and thought, hang on a sec, we can do something with this. So they pretended that Michael Jordan was wearing Air Jordans and kept giving him the, you know, the customized Nike Air shits with the Jordan logo on them and just let everyone believe, oh yeah, he's wearing Air Jordans, you know, the shoe that's coming out pretty soon. And one of my favorite things about this story is that the NBA went as far as to send Nike a smarmy letter informing them quite helpfully that Michael Jordan wasn't allowed to wear a certain black and red shoe in his next game. Otherwise, he'd be fined. And Nike saw that and went, this is just free publicity. Michael, wear the shoe, will pay the fine. And be sure to, as well to tell everyone that it's an Air Jordan. And Nike very quickly realized like, the marketing potential of this idea and framed the entire advertising campaign for Air Jordans around the fact the NBA did not want Michael Jordan wearing not the Air Jordan, but one that looked like it, so it didn't really make any difference to the public because it looked like it, so who gives a fuck? Like they literally released an ad that's just Michael Jordan stood wearing the shoe where they say, this is Michael Jordan. He's wearing some Air Jordans. The NBA don't want him to wear this shoe and then just put a big black censorship bar over the shoe. <laughs> On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. And they have like posters of Michael Jordan wearing Air Jordans, like Gravity's Worst Nightmare written on it. So is this what you're talking about with like the magic shoe? Yes, because um, the NBA were understandably very annoyed about Michael Jordan's repeated flouting of their rules and refused to publicly comment upon it. And Nike, realizing this, thought, well, we can now just say whatever the fuck we want. And all they did say is that the shoe was banned, but they never bothered to mention why which led to many members of the public assuming that the shoe gave Michael Jordan an unfair advantage. And for anyone out there who's currently thinking, who'd be stupid enough to believe that? Think for a moment if I just told this story and didn't explain the reasoning the NBA didn't like the shoe, and then gave you the option of picking either the shoe gave him an unfair advantage or it needed to be 51% white. Which one of those explanations sounds more stupid? Because I can't decide. Yeah, and like there's there's often, you know, restrictions on what athletes can wear because of like advantages and stuff. So it's yeah. not out of the realm of possibility that they have some crazy magic shoe that like gives them an advantage. Well there was a story a couple of years ago about the Beijing Olympics where swimmers broke so many records they genuinely thought the pool was too short. They thought the pool had been built wrong and it wasn't to Olympic specifications. And it turns out that all the Olympians who broke records were wearing a newly developed um, swimsuit based on shark skin that allowed them to cut through the water so cleanly um, that they were just breaking records left, right, and they banned that costume for being too good. Which again sounds uh, almost as ridiculous as Michael Jordan having like special shoes. Yeah, and that's the thing that happened in real life. Also, if I told you that story and then just said it got banned because it was the wrong colour, 
Which one sounds more ridiculous? Yeah. Nike were well aware that the public would just come to the natural something, well, the shoe must give him an unfair, right? Why would the NBA give a shit what shoe he wears unless it's giving him an unfair advantage? And Michael Jordan himself was aware of this and just refused to correct anyone when they made that assumption because he knew that it would drive sales of his shoe. Because who doesn't want to wear the magic shoe that Michael Jordan wears that they have to find him for because it's too good? So, like, is the whole storyline in Space Jam, like, basically an allusion to this story because they have to go and get like his sneakers for him to be able to play i can imagine yeah in the writer's room that was like you know a subtle allusion to that and he also mentioned like his lucky shorts that he wore underneath his regular shorts for every single game just so funny because like all the nba were doing by fining him was just making him more money because like yeah, he was being fined five thousand dollars for every game, but Nike were paying it for him, and just he was—they were giving him essentially millions of dollars of free advertising that he used to sell millions of these shoes. And it's like now, it's not just a shoe; it's a brand. It's a—it's a fucking like icon. And as I mentioned, Michael Jones a very savvy businessman, and he quickly realised um, the like, you know just the free PR potential of this story. And that's one of the reasons why, even though he knew he wasn't wearing Air Jordans, never bothered to correct anybody when they um, asked him about it. Yeah, he'd be stupid to, really. And that's one of the reasons why people watching this may have heard this story without that clarification I made, that they weren't Air Jordans, they were a customised pair of airships. Because that detail of the story is, you know, a footnote, if people can forgive the pun. Actually, no, don't forgive the pun. That's a great pun, fuck you. <laughs> But to me, it makes the story way more interesting because it shows Michael Jordan being way more business savvy than just like you know capitalising on the um, uh, the potential controversy of wearing the shoes. It shows he was far more calculating and shrewd um, in his eventual behaviour, and I fucking love that. 